Today it's Friday, so it's fixed base Friday. And here is a fixed base for us to fix. And I understand it's general service and the meter lamp. You know that one of mine this is this is beautiful condition, isn't it? That one of mine, um, which we have um when we do the on the air test just to listen to the audio in which isn't connected to an aerial. Uh, some Wally's put a, a red LED for the for the receiver, and I found that really annoying. Mind you, is amber a good colour for um, receive? But there you go. And who'd have thought uh, that Dixon's would have come up with such a fantastic product? And 38 years later, I still think it's fantastic. We've had a spate of new sets I've been doing, and they're not fantastic. Half a second to go into transmit, clumsy menus, this does exactly what it says on the tin, and we're going to service this for this gentleman so he can get another 38 years use out of it. It's got a short mains lead though. Oh, they've got 12 volts input, I didn't know that. What am I running ours off an inverter for then? Hmm. Right, we'll better open it up with a zillion screws, and let's see if anything's inside. Just look at that for a low hour set. 38 years old, around the power supply, there's no dust. It's never had the smell of a fag. It's beautiful. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. I didn't tell the customer this, so he was not expecting this on his bill, but I'll tell you what, we're gonna change both those capacitors in the power supply, simply because it's 30 years old. Okay, so what we've done is to change the two capacitors in the power supply. Uh, next time I have to get out of my chair, I'll go and get the ESR meters and we'll see what kind of state these were in. I mean, the radio's in great condition, but these parts are 38, 38 years old and are very vulnerable to being damaged. So, um, I've changed the lamp, but the brightness needs twiddling with because of this current consumption of hours is clearly less than the ones that were originally in or well, there's a voltage difference or something's different but the 150 ohm resistor just there the 1 watt one resistor 102 is it um, that just have a look 102 yeah that controls the brightness of the meter lamp so We'll do a bit of experimentation with the value. I feel so probably something around about 40 ohms will probably be the right brightness. I did just short it out because it's 12 volt bulbs um, and it was far too bright, it was like a headlight. So we'll check this power supply before we go any further because we want it to do 13.8 and it helps if we put it in the volt mode let's see what we've got. At least these power supplies are adjustable. We've got 12.15, so it's a bit lower than we would like, because I'm sure that we wouldn't get a full output if we had it like that. I'll just plug the test set in so that we can see what kind of output we have got with the power supply as it is. I really ought to have seen what the voltage was before I changed the capacitors because it's bound to have been lower. There has got to be somewhere on those capacitors. There's nothing worse than sending a radio back and, and 40 minutes later there's a bang and the power supply blows up. So it's a sensible precaution to change those. So I'm switched on. Come on, on channel 19. I'll plug the factory original mic in. And it is doing what? Well, if that's. I hope that's high. Good grief. It's only doing. Oh my goodness. No wonder he wants it servicing. It's doing 1.6 watts. I'll tell you what, I'll switch the other camera on. I think it's available on the mixer. It's not available on the mixer. 
I'll press some magic buttons and it will be. So we're on the three watt scale. And so at three watts, it's 1.6 there. And on low power, it's doing virtually unreadable of uh, 20 milliwatts, something like that. Right, uh, so we'll switch it back to high power and we'll start by setting this power supply up. So we want that to be 13.8, that will affect the power output. However, it's always possible that it doesn't do 13.8. Goes down nicely. Oh, look at that. There we are, that'll do me nicely. Now we're going to transmit and see what it does now. It now does. 2.2 watts. Well, that's an improvement for a start. Okay, so put that away and we'll set up the. We won't put it away, we need it for the VCO. There's no reason to suspect the VCO doesn't work, but it's a simple task to set it up, so we may as well set it up. So uh, we're setting the channel to 40. And between test point one and ground, we are looking at four volts in receive. So between test point one and ground. Test point one, if I can find the camera remote, You've got transformer one there, you've got resistor four, and it's kind of the the, the leg furthest away from you if you've got the knobs towards you, which is the test point. So that's resistor four. The can resistor four, that's therefore the test point. So We'll put that to power supply chassis. It would be much handier if I found a crocodile lead clip. Yeah, would be if I could find one. I don't need one on Mr. Chippy's bench. Okay, so we'll look, we've got that. Um, it says they want it to be four. So that's a bit high. So we don't, in certain temperatures, the VCO to drop out. So we'll set that. And it's called T1. And that's the wrong tool. Try and use the plastic one. Yeah, well, I'm sure that 4.02 is about 4. Let's pop this camera back a fraction.
And now we need to set the unit into transmit. And we should have four volts. We've got 2.85. So this time we need to adjust the trimmer capacitor to TC2. For four volts. That'll do. I'll go back to receive and we're still four volts. So that's great. Now what we do is we go to channel one. And they want it to be between 1.8 to 2.5. So we're on receive. And now we're on transmit. That's absolutely excellent. So if you previously had any problems with channels dropping out at extreme temperatures, well, it doesn't now. So that's another job done. So I'm glad I checked that. So transmit L4, L8, L9. Are the final ones aren't they yeah so earlier in the stage we're looking at T2 T3 and T4 so 2 3 and 4 so we'll find where the tool's gone There. And let's see if we can get a bit more out of this radio. I can hear the meter banging across. So it looks like somebody's once adjusted it for a psychological retune, so it looks more powerful than it is. Interestingly enough, the power's gone up since we did the VCO. So we're just teetering on the edge of three watts. So now we'll move on to those back three and I have to look at the instructions every single time. So we've got, is it four, eight and nine? Yes, four, eight and nine. So we want maximum for a start. Whoa. So we've gone off the three watt scale. Five, six and a quarter watts. I'll just check. I always say power doesn't matter that much, but I'll tell you what, the radio doing 1.7 or whatever it was, two watts and uh, are now doing what we'll be doing for it will be absolutely excellent result for him so now we rotate coil 4 clockwise to obtain 4.4 volts 4.4 watts what we're talking about so we'll drop so we can, the power's now dropping down 5 watts 4.5 there we go and then and it's important that it is, that is clockwise and L9 is counterclockwise to what the manufacturer says is set to 3.8 watts. Well, of course, we're not. We're going to set it to 4. And it was rising and then it's falling again. And the reason this is done is so that it's the same on all channels. There's nothing worse than it being 2 watts on channel 1 and four point something on channel 40. And so because of that, I'm now going to select channel 40 and we'll see what the power is there. And it's four watts dead on and we'll select channel one and it's four watts dead on. That is an ideal result. So if I switch to camera three, let's see what frequency we're currently doing. 
So we're looking for 27.79125 on channel 20, and of course it's dropped with age as they do. And so therefore it's the trimmer capacitor TC1, which is next to the 10.24 reference crystal, the red one down there. So we'll get the tool in there. Let's try moving it clockwise. Yes, it's going the right direction. Let it very, very slightly high, so it's got a bit of room to drop as time moves on. So that's that done. So pop that back to camera two, and let's look at deviation. So deviation should be 2.2 to 2.5 maximum. Let's just check the test set is tuned in. It looks like it is. Now that looks like it's too high. Because two and a half is there. Wallow. It's a bit too high. It's not stupidly too high. So we'll just turn that down a fraction. I think that should be about it. Wallow. That's ideal, 2.2. Sometimes you've got to manipulate. There's a mic gain and there's a uh, the, the deviation there. But there's no mic gain on the radio, so that's, that's fine as it's set. So what they say is adjust RV6 for maximum deviation. Adjust RV2 for exactly 2.15. Readjust RV6 for exactly 1.6, but we don't want it to be 1.6, we want it to be 2.2, so that's where we just deviate. Oh, that was no pun intended there, we deviate from the deviation instructions. Now, this meat is banging across, and that's no good to anybody like that. So, RV4, and if I remember rightly, it's the one just there, it isn't, that's low power. RV4 is the one to the right here. So we had the deviation one. There we go. Let's tilt this radio up. We're in transmit. I'll lose that camera. We don't need it anymore. And as I say, that meter is, if I can get the radio in a position where we can all see it, let's move that out a bit. It's difficult when the Anyway, banging across if you can see that. So I'm going to reset that so that it reads exactly four. So there we have it. That's another task done. Now we want low power to be 400 milliwatts. So we'll bring that camera back. And we have no transmit. Now these, the preset can play up, and it can also play up because it's got a silver wiper and that can tarnish over the years. So I'm gonna move that around. I doubt that many people are gonna use low power but can be a nice feature in a car. I'm not sure it's much use as in a base. There we go. So there we have 400 milliwatts. And that feature is now working. So that covers the transmitter. So now we will look at the receiver. Select receive on the test set. Lose that camera. And we'll set the signal generator to 2779125 so and switch on the oscilloscope and the cyanide meter at the same time. A 
I wonder how many of these base stations that Dixon sold because we see quite a few and I own about three of them and it just makes you wonder out of all the products that Dixons have sold over the years how many Harrier CBHQ base stations did they make and sell and how many are still in existence I bet it's a lot more than most of their other products that they have there we go we've set it So let's see whether we can hear that. Oh, this is deaf as a post. Oh, RF gain's down, no wonder, right? It's as deaf as a post. So we need to plug in our external extension speaker, which is, in fact, uh, I've just knocked the off switch because it's pull on, push off. And I've just rested it on its knobs as I tilted it upwards. And that's made the off, come on, off, come on. That's another good phrase for today. Okay. So that's, I'll put S9 signal on. And we'll just go and put the camera onto the oscilloscope so we can set the detector. So switching the bench light off so you can actually see the oscilloscope, the detector coil is the one down here on the right, which is T12. I'll just drop down the sensitivity of this. It was virtually spot on. That's made very, very little difference, so that's, that's great. To be honest, it sounds like the IF is out. So we'll start with the first coil in the receiver, T5. Drop the attenuator. I'll go come back on these. My hand's having a huge effect. It's not the tool, it's my actual hand. I'll have to we'll, we'll whip through these quickly and see why. For some reason, the radio just doesn't like my hand. So I'm happy that's set right.
Drop the attenuator down. And I'll have a final go at these two. Drop the attenuator a bit more. Okay, so we can, we can now read down to about 0 0.08 of a microvolt, and let's see what that is on the sign-on meter. So we've got 0 0.27 of a microvolt for 12 decibel sign-on. And we've got 0 0.19 for 12 decibel sign off. Let's see whether it actually mentions this specification in the in the actual specification. It doesn't seem to mention the receive. Oh, it says. Less is better than one microvolt for 20 decibels. Well, let's put the thing to 20 decibels. It's about 20 decibels. So this radio for 20 decibels is doing. 0 0.6 of a microvolt and it says better than one microvolt so it's a lot better than one microvolt which let's turn that up to one what a difference in signal so we've got we've got we can spend a lot more time than they can at the factory setting these up it's got the delta tune control Yeah, right. Right, squelch time. So I switch the signal generator off. And we don't need that one anymore. So we set the squelch to threshold. There we are, squelch is threshold. And at 0 0.3 of a microvolt, the radio is burst into life. So now we'll set the squelch to full. And I'd like this to be about S9 before it comes in. 
10 microvolts, 30 microvolts is a little bit too slack for me, so I want that a bit tighter. And the preset is uh, whatever that one's called, which is RV1. So make that a bit tighter. That might be exactly where we want it now. So we'll do that test again. So we've got the signal generator off, squelch to minimum, set threshold, signal generator on. It's coming at 0 0.3. Squelch to full, 1 microvolt, 10 microvolts, 10 microvolts, 30 microvolts, 100 microvolts it comes in. That's exactly where I want it to be. So we should have a good sensitivity range now uh, on that. So there we go. That that's done. There's nothing more to it. So it's, what did it come in with? One and a half watts. It easily did the four. And unlike the modern sets, you press transmit, it goes straight into transmit. You know, it's a fraction of a second. There's no computer to decide whether or not it's going to do that or not. So that's my take on it. So I'm just going to have to uh, do something about that resistor, and uh, no doubt we'll do an on the air um, test. On the way back, he's he's going to test that um, Midland um, remote set, the M5, tonight. So I'll have him going out with the Midland, and then I'll have him come back with the Harrier. I think we've covered the Harrier CBHQ before, but it's always nice to see another one, especially one that's in such a lovely condition. So uh, I'll just change that resistor, and before we conclude the video, I'll tilt the radio up so we can actually see the meter lit up. So we've changed the resistor, put 47 ohms in from 150 and we have the meter exactly the correct illumination that it should be. So uh, good, that's done. Everything else is done. Uh, let's have a look at these capacitors. Now when capacitors come to the end of the life, they start to rise in value but they break down in uh, voltage. So this is supposed to be 2200 at 25 volts. So let's see what it is. So put it on this ES ESR meter. Twenty-three ninety-two. So it is starting to fail. So that's that. You know, some people might think, oh, that's great, it works better than it should. No. Let's look at the next one, which should be 100 microfarads. 109. Again, it's slightly high. It's starting to fail. And this could be all part of this whole scenario where the things would have gone lower and lower power. So... Great, I'll plug an aerial in. And we'll kind of prop it up a bit. Oh, it helps if I plug the mic in. One nano, Roger. They're talking as ever on 19. Don't change channel. Okay, so I think we'll do an on the air test with that tomorrow. And um, yeah, it's a lovely radio that. 
and it's doing the full power and what more could you want thank you for watching